Welcome to a new video and in this video I want to show you the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II's Photo Pro app and I want to give you a detailed overview about the Photo Pro app and how I can take wonderful shots with it during different scenarios. So let's get started. One thing that is very important before you start shooting with your Xperia 5 Mark II is that you open up the Photo Pro app and get familiar with the user interface. So I will guide you a little bit through the uh, main user interface, how you can change between different uh, modes, for example. And then later we start with the different scenes. First we start by opening up the Photo Pro app and this is how it looks like when you start it for the first time. So what you can see here on the left is your screen of course, what you're recording and you have a leveler that allows you to level out uh, stuff as you can see if I turn it a bit I can make it even. Then on the top left you have the big P which shows you which mode you are in. By default you are in program mode and the program mode allows you on the far right you can see the EV meter that I'm controlling right now to change my exposure compensation. So I can go up to make it brighter, go down to make it a little bit darker. And when I change this value here, you can see it on the far right, but you can also see the value changing on the bottom of the screen to minus one right now. And I can change it in very close steps, as you can see here on the bottom. And on the bottom, you have also your shutter speed, which is one over 160s right now, f 1.7 and the ISO being 64 right now. Then I have the AF on button which allows me to yeah, automatically focus on everything as you can see here or the auto exposure lock which will lock the exposure on whatever I have set. So if I have it set to this you can see this is a bit uh, brighter now. If I unset it you can see it's getting a bit darker. So this allows me to lock my exposure. Also very important. This is the P mode. If I want to change a mode, I can go on P and I have a full automatic mode. So if I want to quickly shoot something very quickly, I just go to automatic mode and then hit and that's it. And uh, yeah, automatic mode doesn't allow me to change anything. And uh, if I go to P mode, I have again my controls. If I go to S mode, I have the controls changing to shutter speed. So I have again the option to change my shutter speed here to the uh, left to make it faster, to the right to make it uh, a bit slower, which makes the scene a little bit brighter as you can see here. And in manual mode I have even the controls over everything by default shutter speed here and various different other settings that I can set up. Then there's a menu button where I can set up various different menu options just like for example the file format and by default it is uh, set to JPEG in the auto mode or in P mode I think in the menu mode as well for some reason. But you can change it to RAW. Uh, I cannot change it right now for some reason. But in general you are able to change it to RAW as well. Then we have the exposure and color controls here. Where you can set up the DRO and Auto HDR. And we also have uh, the focusing options here. And some other options as well. Uh, but we don't want to look into this. So this is basically the menu, the, the control. And to take a shot you just have to half press for focusing and press completely for taking the shot. So this is basically everything. Then there are some other options here. As you can see here I can shoot the drive mode and so on. And these things we want to check in our um, scenarios. So let's start with the first scene. It will be an easy one. I will just simply will try to photograph this building which is not moving so it should be an easy shot shouldn't it be so the first scenario is probably the easiest scenario you just have a static subject or object that is not moving so what we want to do is we go into our photo pro app and uh, we have everything set to auto first and I have, if I have a nice little scene that I want to photograph just like this building for example, we, are, we have of course the option to just press and hold and get a shot out of it and you will see that the shot pretty much looks good, dynamic range is nice and everything else should be okay as well. It's very windy right now here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what we want to do 
as we go into auto and we select the M mode. In M mode we have the option to set various different things. Like for example we can set our shutter speed. In low light situations I would just set the shutter speed to something lower here. But as it is sunny right now let's set it to something very high like uh, 1 over 2000 here. We have the AF on button where you can just simply automatically uh, focus but we can also say we want to have manual focus because this is a non-moving subject so we can have like manually focus into it if you want to but as the subject is also not moving you can use the single autofocus one and just tap on the subject that you want to capture and uh, the only other thing that we need to take care of is the histogram that you can see on the lower right corner so to make sure that everything is like uh, yeah, in focus and everything is like uh, not too far to the left or too far to the right in terms of um, in terms of image information so left would be too dark and right too bright and as you can see it's a bit bright so what I can do is adjusting the shutter speed to make it a little bit darker now you can see there's a little bit more darker information but the bright uh, sky is um, better now in view. So depending on what you want to achieve this is the thing that you can do. Of course you have the exposure control as well to move it to the left or right as you can see here. So the histogram is moving to the left or to the right depending on what I set here as exposure compensation. And of course I can set the ISO as well to a value uh, that I want to the lowest value is 64 here. I think the automatic one is doing a good job right now. So for this situation all I can do now is choose the um, choose the maybe I stay at the 24 but zoom a little bit in to have this kind of look 35 millimeters equivalent and now I press again here to focus here and now I do the composition I want a bit more of the sky inside I want to be focused here and I focus and take the shot and now we can take a look at the shot and you can see we get a nice bright looking shot without any big issues by dynamic range if you have dynamic range issues so you're if you're shooting against the Sun for example what you can do uh, let me go back is go into your menu and then you have the option to go in the DRO auto HDR so you go into your uh, exposure compensation settings basically and you can set uh, auto HDR or dynamic uh, optimizer DRO and auto HDR will create three shots out of your image instead of only uh, one shot that where it tries to capture as much as, much as uh, of dynamic information as possible so we choose auto HDR here we can go back and we can redo the shot let me go to 35 millimeters here again roughly focus here and now the shot took a little bit longer but you can see that the dynamic range should be better depending on here you can see not much of a difference I would say between those two photos maybe a slightly bit um, darker here on the uh, stones of this uh, building but this is basically how you do your uh, static shots of course if you have a non-moving subject you can of course also go into manual focus and then manually focus so, so you can see this is not in focus and now it should be slowly getting in focus and if you have a tripod it's even better but because I'm filming uh, or I'm um, doing this right uh, out of my hand this uh, could be an issue and a uh, good thing is it doesn't need to focus if you use autofocus uh, if you use manual focus if you autofocus it needs to uh, focus so you lose a little bit of time but as you can see it's also very very sharp and good looking and also a nice little photo so uh, that's our first scenario non-moving subjects or objects and where you can use 
a manual focus or a single autofocus. What do you do if you have a slightly darker scenario where you want to take a photo just like here in the woods a bit? Uh, there are also some nice little options that you can take and I want to show you how you can uh, create wonderful photos even in darker scenarios and what kind of tweaks you have to do in your Photo Pro app to take little shots even in some darker scenarios. So let's get started. So in darker scenarios you can see that the uh, Camera Pro, the Pro Photo app, uh, chooses a shutter speed of 1 over 60s and ISO 80 to keep the noise down. But let's pretend we have an even darker scene here. What we could do is just go into shutter speed and what we want to do is uh, set our shutter speed to something low. Just like for example one, well, if you have a tripod you can go up to 130s even or even, even uh, lower than this but uh, one thick 60s 180s if you have a handheld shot I would go to 1 over 100 if possible and then choose your ISO in this case it's ISO 100 that is the lowest we can of course try in manual mode if you go to manual mode we have the option to choose our ISO to be the lowest as possible what you can see here this is a bit too low you can see it on a histogram too man too much information is in the dark in the shadows and if you raise the ISO 100 uh, look, looks a little bit better you can raise it a little bit more to get even more in and usually you want to have it in the middle mostly but you can see the scene here in this case it's pretty dark so 100 I think 180s could be also working so in this case I'll take a shot here and I can of course uh, disable the autofocus uh, continuous and go to single shot autofocus and want to focus on this tree here and hit a button and then I have this photo taken and you can then see depending on what kind of image you want to create uh, flare also you want to capture this is one way on how to do this switch to the normal camera we want the photo pro app so this is one way to, these are the parameters you want to set. The menu mode only if you really have time. If you don't have really time, then go into really shutter speed mode and sh set the shutter speed to 1 over 100 if you are hand holding. And especially if you're like photographing moving subjects, then don't go below this, otherwise you'll get blurry photos. And otherwise, if you have a non-static uh, image, you can go up to 1 uh, over 50s here, for example. Handheld, it should work as well. You don't move too much. And you can see then, this is a lot of a brighter, more brighter image, but the sharpness level is, I think, still extraordinary. So over 1 over 50s should work as well here, uh, especially as the lens, uh, the main lens on the Xperia uh, 5 Mark II and 1 Mark II is um, optically image stabilized. The thick 16 millimeter lens, however, is not. If I switch to this one, you will see that uh, you have focus, but 1 over 50s could produce a little bit of a blur. So, in this case, I think it is sharp enough still, but keep this in mind that you are a bit careful with the 16 mm lens. The 70 mm lens should be no issue at all. Also, 150s it has also it also has autofocus and it also has the possibility to take quick shots here. And you can see in this case uh, maybe slightly blurry. So with the 70 one, of course, the shakes of your hands are a bit exaggerated, even with its good um, optical. Uh, optical image stabilization. I can maybe go to 180s to see if this will work out better. Try to hold it as steady as possible. And yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So now I'm in yeah, scenario number two or three where I want to shoot some flowers in wonderful Auckland Albert Park in this really summery condition so what we want to do first of all is we will start uh, the screen recorder so you can see something what I'm doing here in the photo pro app so for the pro app I go to p mode first to show you the scene here a little bit 
So this is the scene that you can see here, wonderful flower gardens of some flowers. Flowers are usually some static objects, but you can see it's a little bit windy and it's a bit bright outside. So we will go to shutter speed and what we want to do is sh set the shutter speed to something very high because the flowers are moving. Uh, maybe not one eight thousand, but one over th two thousand, one over three thousand two hundred, something like this. And um, yeah, what we want to do then is we want to go to focus and set manual focus because we can get very very close to those flowers. And uh, let me switch maybe the lens to something where I can reach the flowers. There we go. And now what I can do is simply go to manual focus and manually focus until the flowers are really, really in focus. I think this should be okay. And because I'm not really moving, I'm static, all I have to do now is press the button and I've taken a wonderful shot of the flowers here. And they're not in focus because I didn't focus correctly. But you can see where this is going. So use the manual focus slider to try to get the flowers in focus as much as possible. And you have, maybe sometimes you have to bit of you have to tweak a little bit with the focus setting to see if this is working. Then it's not working. You can just set again a little bit in the other direction. Take another shot. And uh, yeah, so you can then check out which shot is in focus. This one is a little bit... Is it in focus? A little bit out of focus. You can switch to the other one. This looks better. You can see the flowers are in focus. So this is the way. 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 How you can focus on flowers and I will do some and, b-roll where i can show you also especially on very close ups where you don't use the 70 millimeters lens where you use this 24 millimeters or a 16 millimeter lens depending uh, on what kind of depth of field effect you want to achieve so i will show you this with uh, 24 first and uh, then we can uh, take a look maybe i take this tripod with me for recording the audio at least and uh, then i do an ultra close-up shot of the flowers so here we have the flowers and here is where the manual focus comes in handy you can see i can tune it the way i want it to have and even if the, the wind comes now and moves a little bit i can have it the way i want and focus on this little leaf a little flower that i want to focus on and now should have a pretty sharp image of this one flower. As you can see here, the depth of field of the main camera is uh, very, very low. That means you can create nice little bokeh effects with the main lens. You can switch to the 16 one. And 16 millimeter lens, you can get even closer, I think. Let's go into macro here. And adjust it until it, until I think it is sharp. It's a little bit hard to see because the sun is in my back. But I think here I got a sharp shot of those flowers at least. You can see it is not really macro. Let me go in a little bit closer on this one here. And try again. So the minimum focus distance is I think somewhere around here. Let's see, ah, slightly out of focus, this, this one is in focus, so it's a bit harder with the uh, ultra-wide camera. And I switched to normal camera again for some reason. And yeah, the 24mm I think is better for this kind of action, so the minimal focus distance is, I think, a little bit higher. So another scenario here where I get got this sharp here. So for those close-ups, I think the main lens makes more sense. And you choose the manual focus in this case 
because you can focus on this one little flower that you want to and I can show you with single autofocus it also can work but if it gets like this windy and the wind comes in before you uh, press the button in this case it worked as well but it can get a little bit more difficult so for static shots of flowers in this case where they are not much moving it makes maybe a little bit more sense to use the manual focus this is one way where you use the manual focus of course i showed you already static and uh, non-moving objects uh, where you can also use the manual focus but most of the time i like to use the single shot autofocus because it's so good it works so quickly and it's so good and uh, one way where we will use the continuous autofocus system is the other scenario that i want to show you right uh, next to this one uh, or after this one so let's get moving and uh, let's get started the next scenario is street photography so shooting in the street and shooting people always means that you have to struggle a little bit with the application and the settings because people are quick and fast moving subjects so what we want to do when we do street photography is that we simply go to our shutter speed mode so s mode and we set up a very high shutter speed because it's so bright outside right now i want to keep it at one over 2500 maybe that should be okay not too bright i think and let it yeah control everything else so this is what we want to do right now and uh, yeah the iso i don't want to set i want to choose it um, uh, the way it likes it to choose and afc so af mode we set to con uh, continuous AF afc mode so it can continuously track people and subjects uh, when i want to do quick street photography it makes a lot of sense for people if i want to track people here to take a shot when people are moving and this is basically the setting that you will want to set for yeah, every time you will have quick moving subjects like also toddlers kids that are quickly moving or pets that are quickly moving and uh, what you want to do there as well if you want to record some sports or something like this sports events will be another scene totally but also is connected to this also high shutter speed because the movement of those people is usually or those football players for example or cars in a racing um, sport is quickly it's very fast so you want to have a fast shutter speed and choose the main lens choose the main lens whenever possible because the main lens has the ability to quickly focus autofocus especially when yeah photographing humans it makes a lot of sense of course if you're photographing sports like football game or something like this you want to go down to 70 uh, millimeters as well here you have to adjust the, the shutter speed slightly to have it not too dark and uh, yeah those settings uh, apply mostly for the 24 millimeters where you have the sports mode where you can just simply press and uh, hold and if you have oh press and hold you cannot press and hold you have to go in here and uh, choose continuous high shooting and then you can press and hold and uh, if something would move quickly right now people are dancing there it will just shoot like super crazy 20 frames per second or something like this which the xperia 5 mark ii has the possibility to do so it's pretty windy here i don't know why anyway the same goes if you want to catch anything in flight birds animals that are moving very quickly use this mode continuous high uh, when shooting and continuous low is for lower shooting you can also use this if you don't need the high shooting and if you switch to 70 millimeters you don't have the high option you can only choose the low option so if you want to have something uh, like a football game uh, then at least you can have the low option but the low option also doesn't autofocus as much as good as you can see here in the bunch of photos that i shot right now uh, it is not always in focus but this guy is like literally at the same focusing distance so it doesn't change much but in general that's uh, an issue with this lens and also the 60 millimeter lens we go to the 60 millimeter lens which also only has the low option not the high option and uh, no autofocus mode even if it 
quickly can shoot images of the skateboarder here right now as you can see here him moving around so it's also very very quickly but not every shot should be sharp okay it has a fair large depth of field the 16 millimeter one so probably maybe every second shot is sharp but I would really uh, recommend you if you want to have a high speed shoot shooting just go to the 24 one because it has um, the autofocus uh, advantage uh, and also for people especially it has eye autofocus and uh, face detection autofocus mode as well and uh, you can choose there even the high mode and then get maybe a little bit down like uh, 1 over 2500 in this case as shutter speed which will work well um, yeah this is basically everything for my detailed look on the um, Xperia 5 Mark II Photo Pro mode. There are lots and lots of tons of other settings that you can set up here in the menu for example but I don't want to go uh, there right now. I wanted to show you uh, quick photography uh, shooting scenarios and tips on how to shoot and get started with the Photo Pro app because this is one of the best apps on the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II. Um, yeah, smartphone, one of the best apps. This is why I wanted to show you this. So in conclusion if you just want to follow easy instructions, if you have a non-static moving subject, go into shutter speed mode, choose a fairly high shutter speed, and if you want to have continuous autofocus, use the 24 millimeters continuous autofocus and go into continuous shooting high for fast moving subjects. And then you can later always like uh, find the best photo out of the photos that you shot. If you have a static subject that is not moving much and you have the time, just go into the mode manual and set everything up that you want to. So you don't need the continuous high, you use single shot, you change the uh, shutter speeds to whatever you like to have. If you have a tripod, you can go even lower. So in low light situations, you have not this problem. You go to manual focus and manually focus on the non-moving subject the way you want it. And yeah, this works the best. If you don't have time and you want to have a, sh a static shot, go to shutter speed, a mode, again, choose autofocus single, tap on the object that you want to focus on, press and hold and then tap uh, the uh, press and hold for, for focusing and then just take the shot. This works the best usually. If you want to have it very quickly, don't have the time to think about anything, just either go to the completely auto mode or go to the P mode where you have at least the option in P mode to uh, set the EV uh, exposure compensation up or down. And yeah, these are my uh, tips and tricks for the uh, Photo Pro app on the Sony Xperia 5 Mark II and this probably also works on the Xperia 1 Mark II. So yeah, people that use the Xperia 1 Mark II can also follow my Photo Pro guide. I hope you enjoyed this little video. Uh, like, comment and subscribe. That's everything for this video. Until the next time, bye!